Number 10. The Ancient Villa Just a few years ago, builders working to complete a project inside a suite of luxury apartments in the Italian capital of Rome stumbled upon something a little strange. There seemed to be evidence that the luxury apartments had been built over something ancient, but it wasn't until much later that archaeologists were able to go in and do their investigating. After six years of digging, they finally unveiled what they found below. There had been an ancient Roman dwelling hidden for nearly 2,000 years. It was like digging up someone's kitchen floor and finding that their house had been built over top of a castle. The archaeological work revealed decorations that you wouldn't believe. This was a top not Roman dwelling complete with geometric designs on the floor, frescoes on the wall, Latin inscriptions. They even found artifacts, such as lacquered bowls showing mythological heroes like Hercules and Athena. And luckily for the world, this ancient Roman dwelling has been completely restored and opened to the public. For only around $10, you can go beneath the fancy apartments and walk into a real house that had been lived in by a prominent member of ancient Roman society. Number 9. The Oldest Pet Cemetery The graves of nearly 600 cats and dogs have recently been found in Egypt, all of which were buried in what may be the oldest and one of the largest pet cemeteries in the entire world. Many of the pets were found wearing collars or other decorations, and preliminary analysis showed that they had been cared for despite injuries and old age just like we do today with our pets, only this was over 2,000 years ago. The Egyptian pet cemetery was discovered near an old Roman port town called Berenice, and according to Michael McKinnon, a zoo archaeologist from the University of Winnipeg who has studied what roles animals played in the ancient world, the cemetery was one of a kind and unlike anything anyone had ever encountered before. The cemetery was used probably between the 1st and 2nd century CE, during a time when the port city was thriving with trade from India, Europe, and Arabia. A total of 585 animals were excavated and analyzed, with help from veterinarians and archaeologists. Each animal had been gently placed inside of a well-prepared pit, some even buried with textiles or pieces of pottery. About 90% of the animals were cats, with 5% being dogs and the other 5% being monkeys. What's really fascinating about these burials is that there was no evidence of mummification found. It was just an ordinary graveyard, filled with the beloved cats and the occasional cherished dog or monkey of the ancient Romans and Egyptians who lived in the area. Number 8. The Tower of Skulls 500 years ago, back when the Aztecs ruled what is Mexico City today, they built a horrifying tower of human skulls, known as Wei Zampantli. New research has shown that this monstrous construction of bones was far larger than anyone had previously thought. Biological anthropologist Rodrigo Bolanos, who is working closely with the site in Mexico City, has found evidence that there were at least 603 skulls stacked on top of each other and glued in place with mortar. That's a lot of skulls. And, believe it or not, there were actually seven of these towers in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, where Hernán Cortés arrived in 1521. Of course, these Spanish invaders burned the towers to the ground after defeating the Aztecs. But some archaeological evidence still remains. But here's some really intriguing information about the Tower of Skulls. Most historians thought that the towers were only built from the skulls of young male warriors. but. New evidence has shown that some of the skulls belong to women as well as children, leading experts to wonder just whose heads were used to construct these massive monoliths of death. What do you think the main purpose was of these skull towers? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Ancient Roman Lamborghini Archaeologists working in Pompeii, the ancient city that was buried in ash and frozen in time when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 CE, have just discovered what some experts are referring to as the Lamborghini of chariots. Researchers unearthed a magnificent chariot, slightly north of the ancient walls that still surrounds the cursed city of Pompeii. Before the eruption, this area would have been a gateway for the elite and wealthy citizens of Rome to enter the villas and countryside farms surrounding the city. This explains why the chariot has been compared to a Lamborghini, because it was owned by someone extremely wealthy at the time. 
The chariot was definitely not a standard wagon used by some kind of lowly farmer or peasant. This was an exceptional leisure vehicle that must have been owned by someone who held great sway in the community. The chariot was found inside of a double-level portico, the equivalent of a double-car garage. It had four iron wheels, there were extremely comfortable seats with armrests, and it was decorated quite fashionably. The sides of the chariot were found adorned with bronze and wooden panels, and there were bronze and tin backplates on the chariot that depicted scenes from mythology with satyrs and cupids. All in all, this was an expensive and impressive ride. As for the chariot's historical significance, researchers say that it will help them to better understand the people who lived in Pompeii and what relationship they had with the Mediterranean world. While similar chariots have been discovered in Greece, this is the first one to have ever been found in Italy. Number 6. Secret Tunnels A secret medieval tunnel system was just discovered completely by accident thanks to a team of electrical technicians working in Wales. Employees working for Western Power Distribution were moving an electrical pipe when they found the random tunnel, which they claimed did not appear on any maps and was completely unknown by the local residents. The workers informed the proper authorities of what they found, all work was halted, and in came the archaeologists. The archaeologists quickly realized that they had something impressive on their hands. There was a 4-foot-tall, 1.2-meter tunnel tucked underneath a footpath though records going back to the 12th century showed nothing about a tunnel in the area. This means it was probably constructed during medieval times. But for what purpose, no one can really say. And unfortunately, this discovery is so new that archaeologists have only just begun their investigation. We won't know the truth about this mysterious tunnel until much later. However, there are some people who are already guessing that the secret tunnel could be linked to the mysterious underground cave network rumored to be hidden underneath large portions of the United Kingdom. But as of right now, there's no truth to this theory. Number 5. Undersea Wreckage A recent expedition by divers checking out the wreckage of the Mentor, a ship which sank off the coast of Kytheria way back in 1802, has uncovered some very cool artifacts. The dive team recovered pieces of the vessel's rigging, a small treasure of coins, a single leather sole from a shoe, one metal buckle, a couple of chess pieces, and some other mundane objects like cooking utensils. And while this may not seem that exciting, it is pretty cool considering the wreckage itself. The ship had originally been carrying marble sculptures from the Pantheon to Athens. These marble sculptures depicted Greek gods, heroes from Greek mythology, and mythical animals. The sculptures were successfully delivered and have been on display at the British Museum in London since 1860, but the ship sank shortly after returning to Kytheria and hitting some rocks. It's been under 65 feet or 20 meters of water ever since. It wasn't until the 21st century that divers began finding all of the cool artifacts from antiquity down in the murky depths where the ship is at rest. These recent objects retrieved from the shipwreck are showing the ordinary lives of the people who had been on board when the ship sank. According to Demetrius Corcumelius from the Greek Ministry of Culture and Sports, the target of the diving mission was to understand how the crew and passengers were living. Judging by the gold coins that were found, some being from Holland, some from Spain, and some from the Ottoman Empire, archaeologists have been able to determine that it was a very cosmopolitan group of people on board the Mentor. And this was likely the case for many ships sailing the Mediterranean in the early 1800s. Number 4. The Great Eagle Archaeologists, working with the Mexican National Institute of Anthropology and History, recently announced the discovery of an ancient Aztec sculpture dating back 600 years that depicts a golden eagle. It was found at an ancient temple in Mexico named Templo Mayor, and is, so far, one of the largest statues ever carved into the floor of a temple. The iconic Templo Mayor once sat at the heart of the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan, what is now Mexico City. Archaeologists believe the eagle was carved into the floor of the temple sometime in the 14th century, at a time when the king Moctezuma I reigned over all of the Aztec Empire. Templo Mayor is also known as the Great Temple, but it was only one of the 78 buildings that comprised the sacred section of the city known as Tenochtitlan. The temple was first constructed by Itzcoatl, 
sometime between 1427 and 1440. As for the eagle statue, archaeologists say it's known as its Kua'ali, which translates to English as volcanic eagle. It was a very important symbol in the culture of the ancient Aztecs, and was considered a sacred creature that they believed was present at the birth of the sun. The great golden eagle was also the symbol of one of the most feared orders of elite warriors in the old Aztec kingdom. Number 3. Mysterious Mummy Artifact a rather unusual artifact was recently found inside of an Egyptian mummy dating back 2,000 years. American scientists were examining a mummy using a new technology known as a synchrotron particle accelerator. This technology revealed dozens of tiny artifacts that the researchers would have otherwise never seen. These artifacts were found inside the body of the mummy, with one of the largest being a 7 mm long, or 0.7 centimeter, relic made of calcite. The artifact was inside the abdomen of the mummy very close to the incision which had originally been made to remove the internal organs from the body during the embalming process. Experts are now saying that the artifact is a sliver of what was once an amulet placed inside the body to offer spiritual protection to the deceased person in the afterlife. Further analysis showed that the amulet was likely in the form of a scarab beetle, which were fairly common back in ancient Egypt. But here's where things get strange. The mummy itself was only about five years old. And to make things more confusing, on the lid of the sarcophagus, there was a portrait painted of a middle-aged woman. The only theory scientists have right now is that the image on the sarcophagus was meant to show what the child could have looked like had she survived to be an adult. And yeah, that is a little bit creepy. Number 2. The Temple of Aphrodite Archaeologists working in Turkey recently found a temple dating back 2,500 years in the Izmir province. The temple had originally been constructed in the name of Aphrodite, the ancient Greek goddess of love, but hers was not the only structure found. Archaeologists scanned three major districts and discovered 16 settlements from the late Neolithic period and 35 abandoned settlements. According to associate professor Dr. Elif Koperal, an important economic and social network can be seen throughout these new discoveries. The Temple of Aphrodite had been built sometime in the 6th century BC. This was a time when the cult of Aphrodite was extremely popular. Not only was Aphrodite the goddess of beauty, love, and procreation, but she was also heavily associated with war and seafaring. These were all things that the ancient Greeks held in high esteem, so it's no surprise that she was worshipped all throughout the region. Researchers also discovered the broken remains of a statue of a woman, along with a terracotta female head, both of which may have been depictions of the goddess herself. She was almost always portrayed as completely naked or barely clothed, and unknown by many people, Aphrodite even had her own city named after her. It's called Aphrodiseus, and today it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in modern Turkey. Number 1. Baby Cthulhu Fossils Just recently, in 2020, a team of paleontologists from both the United Kingdom and Australia made a rather strange discovery. They found the remains of crinoids from the Cretaceous period that look a whole lot like baby Cthulhu fossils. These marine animals were actually related to things like starfish and sea urchins, but they look a lot like tiny monsters with way too many tentacles. These bizarre remains are skeletons made primarily of the mineral calcite, and while these recent fossils look like small Cthulhu babies, crinoids can actually be found in hundreds of different shapes and sizes. They belong to a family of invertebrate animals known as echinoderms. Echinoderms have pentrameral symmetry, which means that their bodies are formed in patterns of five, which is why common starfish have five arms. However, these creatures are not restricted to only having five arms, it's just that all of their appendages will grow in multiples of five. And, believe it or not, crinoids are older than the dinosaurs. They first appeared at least 300 million years before dinosaurs ever walked the Earth, first evolving in the seas during the Cambrian period. That makes them older than almost anything else on the planet. And there are still around 600 living species of crinoids on Earth today.
Number 10, James Bartley. Is it possible to be swallowed by a whale and live to tell the tale? According to a late 19th century story originating from an anonymous source, a man named James Bartley was found alive in the stomach of a sperm whale 15 hours after the animal swallowed him whole. As the legend goes, the 21-year-old man was one of two whale boat crew members who went missing when a massive sperm whale attacked their boat. When the whale eventually reappeared, the crew noticed movement in its stomach. They cut open its gut and out came Bartley. Still alive, but not in very good condition. His skin was reportedly bleached white by the mammal's digestive fluids. He had lost all his hair, and for the following two weeks, he was delirious. Understandably so, considering what he had been through. Bartley was too traumatized to discuss the incident until a month later, when he described what it felt like to be swallowed whole and travel into the whale's stomach. Nicknamed the Modern Jonah, he supposedly lived for 18 years after the shocking event, dying at age 39. The story's credibility has been called into question numerous times over the years and was eventually classified as a hoax. But old legends die hard and it continues to circulate to this day. Number 9. Akbar Salubiro and Watiba When a 25-year-old Indonesian man named Akbar Salubira failed to return home two days after heading to work at a palm oil plantation in a remote village on the island of Sulawesi in 2017, his concerned family called the police and a search party went out looking for him. Later that day, an extremely bloated, reticulated python, a type of boa constrictor, was seen struggling to move in Salabira's backyard. Residents cut the reptile's stomach open, and to their shock and horror, they found their missing friend. He had been suffocated by the snake and swallowed whole. The horrifying moment was captured on camera, making Salubiro's death the first documented case of a reticulated python killing and eating an adult human. It then came to light that residents nearby had heard a man's panicked cries on the night Salubiro disappeared. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, nobody responded to his pleas. And just the following year, a 54-year-old Indonesian woman named Watiba met the same unfortunate fate as Salubiro, this time on the island of Muna. While tending to her garden in 2018, a 23-foot-long, 7-meter python constricted Watiba to death and swallowed her whole. Relatives and friends found the woman's sandals and other belongings, but Watiba herself had disappeared. Nearby, they discovered an extremely bloated python, and unfortunately, when they caught the snake and split it open, inside was the missing woman. Number 8. Sam Kellett While spearfishing and freediving with friends off Australia's York Peninsula in 2014, 28-year-old school teacher Sam Kellett suddenly screamed. His fishing partners looked around, but he was nowhere to be seen. They spotted a great white shark lurking in the water, leading them to conclude that the worst had happened. State coroner Mark Johns opened an inquest into Kellett's death, during which an eyewitness told of how they saw a shark thrashing just moments after the man vanished. Adelaide Now reported that diver Aaron Whitaker recalled seeing the roughly 16-foot-long or 5-meter shark launch itself vertically from the water at some point during the ordeal. I saw it grab something, but because it was maybe 5 to 7 meters, 16 to 23 feet, away, it was at furthest that I could see. With the visibility in the water, I couldn't make out what the shark had grabbed, Whitaker testified, adding, after the shark came up, I saw a lot of blood in the water. I saw the shark right near Sam's float, and I knew Sam was at his float when I first saw the shark. He said that he was certain the shark took Kellett, even though he did not actually see this happen. The man's body was never found, but his weights and loaded spear gun were, and they contained incisions resembling shark bites, further pointing towards Kellett's gruesome fate. The coroner officially ruled that he died as a result of a shark attack and was most likely swallowed whole. What would you do if you saw your friend being eaten by a shark? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Michael Ford The partially eaten naked remains of a 45-year-old Florida man named Michael Ford were found floating face down in a canal in 2019. The rest of him was spotted nearby in an alligator's mouth. After an employee of the company that owned the property made the gruesome discovery, officers from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission FWC, killed the reptile, and the Polk County Sheriff's Office started investigating Ford's death. 
The truck the man had been driving, which belonged to his friend, was found nearby, and it was subsequently determined that his friends and family had not seen him for several days. Ford's clothes were never found. A necropsy found his hand and foot inside the alligator's stomach, and his body bore other injuries. Officials initially assumed that he had drowned, but his official cause of death had yet to be determined while they awaited the results of a toxicology test. The medical examiner ultimately found that Ford overdosed on methamphetamine before being shredded and eaten by the alligator. His death was ruled accidental, and his injuries were most likely post-mortem, thankfully sparing him from what would have been some seriously painful final moments. Number 6. Mystery Finger Authorities at St. Tammany Parish, Louisiana were baffled in 2018 when a local man found a human finger inside an alligator snapping turtle. He had discovered it while cleaning the reptile with plans to cook and eat the animal. The sheriff's office appealed to the public park through social media for help figuring out who the finger might belong to, but had no luck. Meanwhile, the coroner attempted to get a fingerprint, but was unsuccessful. Investigators also called around to local hospitals, but yielded no meaningful leads. Police began combing the area with search and rescue dogs in hopes of turning up more clues, but it appears as though the finger's owner was never identified. University of Mississippi graduate student Luke Pearson, who was researching alligator snapping turtles at the time, told the Clarion Ledger that the species is armed with strong jaws and teeth that can easily cut through bone, adding that he wouldn't be surprised if a larger specimen was capable of severing an entire human hand. Pearson cautioned that it's wise to stay as far away from the creature as possible. But that's not always easy in places where wildlife and residential areas overlap, or when people release non-native exotic pets into the wild, especially when it comes to animals that do not seem to fear humans. Last year, a 65-pound, 29.4-kilogram alligator snapping turtle made national headlines after residents saw it wandering nonchalantly through a Virginia neighborhood and called the local animal protection police. In this case, authorities believe that the turtle was an escaped or released pet. Number 5. James Smith In 1935, a tiger shark on display at the Sydney Aquarium in Australia vomited a human arm days after being captured in the wild. Naturally, one would assume that the beast must have killed and eaten someone, but surprisingly, this wasn't the case. At first, the shark seemed to adjust well to life in captivity, but days later it began acting erratically, ramming into tank walls, swimming in circles, and sinking to the bottom of its tank. Eventually, the animal began to throw up what a reporter at the time described as a copious brown froth that smelled really foul. Then, out came a bird, a rat, and a human arm, which was tied to a rope. There were no bite marks on the arm. In fact, it appeared to have been cleanly severed with a blade, leading the local coroners to conclude that the shark had not bitten it off. A homicide investigation ensued, and a local paper printed a description of the arm's tattoo in hopes that a member of the public would come forward with information about who the limb belonged to, and perhaps who murdered the unfortunate victim, since it wasn't the shark. A man recognized the arm as belonging to his brother, a bookie, small-time criminal, and boxer named James Smith, who had vanished weeks earlier. Investigators determined that Smith was last seen drinking and playing dominoes with Patrick Brady, a fellow criminal with an extensive rap sheet. As it turned out, the pair and another man, Reginald Lloyd Holmes, had regularly co-conspired to commit insurance fraud scams and smuggle drugs. Detectives figured out that one of these scams had gone wrong. Smith received the blame, and either Holmes or Brady murdered him. Both men were questioned. Holmes denied knowing the other two men and was released. Shortly thereafter, he shot himself in the head, but survived and led police on an hours-long boat chase. He blamed Brady for the murder, but was found shot dead right before he was scheduled to testify in court. Murder charges against Brady fell apart after Holmes died, as the case hinged largely on eyewitness testimony, and he adamantly maintained his innocence until his death in 1965. Number 4. Robert Weaver In 2013, a black bear mauled 64-year-old Alaska resident Robert Weaver at a remote property in George Lake, roughly 110 miles, or 177 kilometers, southeast of Fairbanks. His wife sought refuge in a nearby cabin after throwing things at the bear in an attempt to make it go away. 
but the animal fearlessly continued with its campaign of terror. She also tried grabbing a gun, but it jammed, according to Sky News. Helpless to handle the bear on her own, the victim's wife called authorities. Alaska State Trooper and Ilsen Air Force Base officials were dispatched to the scene, where they found some of the man's mutilated remains outside and saw the bear wandering the area. A trooper noticed it was uncharacteristically unafraid of humans, and they killed it fearing that it might attack someone else otherwise. Some of the victim's flesh was found inside the bear's stomach during a post-mortem examination. Kathy Harms, a biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, determined that the bear was an older male, meaning he was not protecting any cubs when he killed Weaver. He had no apparent diseases and was not starving, ruling out two other major possible causes for the unprovoked attack and leaving officials baffled regarding the bear's motives. Black bear attacks on humans are extremely rare leaving a lot of unanswered questions around the case. Number 3. Missing Boater One day in June 2014, while fishing on the South Alligator River in Cockadoo Park in Australia's Northern Territory, a 62-year-old man was snatched by a crocodile as his family helplessly watched. Because the area is remote and has poor cell phone service, they had no choice but to drive for two hours to reach help. By then, as I'm sure you can imagine, it was too late. Using helicopters and boats, authorities immediately began searching for the offending reptile. They soon spotted two large crocodiles nearly a mile, or 1.6 kilometers, from where the man was last seen and shot both of them dead, including a 15.4 foot long, 4.7 meter croc whose belly contained the man's remains. In a CNN interview following the tragedy, crocodile expert Graham Webb explained that it's unusual for reptiles to attack during the cooler months of the year, and while the area's waters are crocodile infested, making them dangerous year-round, a study found that most crocodile attacks on humans involved swimmers, in other words, people who are already in the water, not boaters. Number 2. Tourist Hand Shark attacks are apparently an ongoing problem off the French island of La Réunion in the Indian Ocean, where 24 people were attacked, 11 of them fatally, between 2010 and 2019. A Scottish tourist named Richard Martin Turner had disappeared in the area while snorkeling off the island. His forearm was later found inside a tiger shark's stomach, with his wedding ring still on his hand. Sadly, this was how Turner's wife identified his remains. The BBC reported that her husband had left her for just a few minutes, but he never returned, resulting in a multi-day police helicopter and boat search. The rest of Turner's body was never found, but he was presumed dead, and it's also unknown in this case whether the tourist drowned or died in a vicious attack. The sheer number of violent encounters between humans and sharks led authorities to ban snorkeling and other water activities outside of protected lagoons in 2013. But this clearly has not done enough to stop the ongoing problem. Number 1. Ricky Ganya A 14-year-old boy named Ricky Ganya was innocently collecting snails on a riverbank in Kuching, Malaysia one day when a crocodile sprang out of the water, clamped its powerful jaws down on the boy's ankle, and dragged him into the river. Ganya's aunt witnessed the horrifying attack and alerted authorities, who found the 14-foot-long, 4.3-meter reptile three miles, or 4.8 kilometers, away from where the attack occurred, and lured it from the water using chicken as bait. It then took them some time to snare the crocodile and drag it to shore, and by the time they did, it was too late to save the teen. Emergency workers cut open the animal's stomach and found Ganya's clothing and mangled remains. Number 10. Pronounced Dead On June 21st, in the Indian city of Lucknow, a man named Mohammed Frakan got into an accident and was quickly rushed to the hospital. He was unconscious and unresponsive, and just a few days later, doctors declared that he was officially dead. However, they declared him dead, coincidentally, after the family of Mohammed told the hospital that they didn't have any money to pay for his medical care. Apparently, the hospital thought it was easier to declare him dead and send him to his own funeral than to do their jobs and revive the man back to health. 
Well, the joke's on the doctors, because just before the funeral began, Mohammed woke up. The burial ceremony was just about to begin, and that was when his family noticed some of his limbs twitching. He woke up just minutes before he was about to be put into the ground and buried forever. Unfortunately, he needed to be rushed back to the very hospital that he was originally kicked out of for being supposedly dead. The hospital put Mohammed on a ventilator. He was in critical condition, but he definitely was not dead. After this nightmarish incident, the family blamed the hospital for being negligent, and rightfully so, just because the man didn't have money to pay for his stay. But of course, the hospital denied any wrongdoing, claiming that we have taken cognizance in the incident and the matter will be thoroughly probed. Number 9. The Open Casket There aren't a lot of recorded cases of muscle movement after death, but there are multiple cases where people have previously been mistakenly diagnosed as being dead. A young man in Peru died after undergoing a standard root canal procedure. However, during the man's funeral, relatives noticed that his ribcage appeared to be moving up and down, as if he were breathing. This didn't make any sense, as he had earlier been pronounced dead after suffering from a fever and chills and then literally dying. But after relatives noticed signs of life, a doctor was called to the funeral, where he confirmed that the young man did indeed show vital signs of being still alive. Everyone was shocked when the boy was taken out of his coffin and transferred to the hospital. But here's where the story gets a little stray. At the hospital, the boy was once again declared dead. After this horrifying incident, relatives of the young man claimed that he had been alive the entire time, and doctors only thought he was dead because of the drugs he had been given during the dental operation. They believed that the drugs slowed his body down enough to make him appear dead. And then, after the whole terrible and terrifying affair with him being nearly buried in his own coffin, he eventually died anyway. But. In any case, the funeral ended up moving forward and the poor man was buried after all. Number 8. A Working Zombie In one of the most shocking incidents of somebody waking up at their own funeral, a 55-year-old woman believed to be deceased suddenly came to life in front of her friends and family as they prepared to give the woman her last rites. Can you imagine the roller coaster of emotions friends and family had upon seeing their loved one suddenly alive at their own funeral? This happened in a remote village in India, and according to the New India Express, doctors had declared the woman dead and then brought her corpse home to her family. But from out of nowhere, the woman woke up and began talking to the people around her as if she had just woken up from a nap. But the woman was clearly out of it when she woke up. She apparently just stood up and then walked back home, went into her cattle shed, and began working just like normal without any knowledge that she was supposed to be dead. The private hospital that had initially declared her dead denied that they had done anything wrong or made any kind of mistake, and in the end, it didn't really matter. The woman appeared to make a full recovery even after rising from the grave. I can't believe this woman woke up from the dead and immediately went back to work. What's the first thing you would do if you woke up from the dead? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Not So Dead Teenager A 17-year-old man recently woke up on the way to his own funeral after being declared dead because of a dog bite. Kumar Merwad was attacked and bitten by a wild dog about a month before his alleged death. He came down with a high fever several days after being attacked by the dog, he was rushed to his local hospital. A horrifying infection began to spread throughout his entire body. Kumar was so sick that he had to be placed on a ventilator. Doctors were then forced to tell his family that if he was taken off the life support system, he would definitely die. Now, here's where things get weird. The family of the teen decided to take him off life support and bring him back to his family home. Once home, the boy clearly appeared to be dead. The family then went ahead and made arrangements for his funeral. But on the way to Kumar's funeral, Kumar suddenly sprang back to life. According to the New York Post, Kumar opened his eyes, wiggled his hands and legs, began breathing in and out very quickly, and was then rushed back to the hospital and put back on the ventilator. He made a miraculous recovery, and 
Nobody knows how. What we do know is that whatever had caused Kumar to basically be dead, it had all been thanks to the bacteria-infected bite from that stray dog. Number 6. Banned from his funeral After Che Lewis was shot and killed in Trinidad and Tobago, he was kicked out of his very own funeral. Lewis was embalmed in a sitting position and placed on a chair so that he could attend. This was quite a bit different from most dead people who are embalmed in lying positions so that they can be placed inside of a coffin. Lewis was dressed up in a swanky pink jacket and white pants, and in fact was dressed up so well that he didn't look dead. He looked like a living person. Person. But here's where things get complicated, because when Lewis arrived at his own funeral, the staff members at St. John Evangelist Church denied him entry and forced him to sit outside. And as he sat outside, stone cold dead, people were walking by and criticizing him for not wearing a mask, which obviously didn't make a whole lot of sense. He was clearly dead. As for why the church refused to let him inside the service, it's because they weren't familiar with the idea of a dead person sitting at their own funeral. And because they didn't understand it, and they didn't like it, they simply didn't allow it. How weird is that? Number 5. Waking up in a body bag A woman recently spent over two hours inside of a body bag before being discovered alive. The young woman's name was Tynesha, and she was only 20 years old at the time. She had been undergoing breathing treatments three times a day because of a medical condition. However, Tynesha's family was forced to call 911 after becoming concerned that she was in distress after her first breathing session of the day went wrong. The police and paramedics arrived, and they discovered that Tynesha had pale lips, difficulty breathing, and some unusual secretions around her mouth. At the scene, Tymesha was declared dead, placed into a body bag, and transported to the mortician's office. But guess what? She wasn't dead at all. She had been in dire need of urgent medical care, and she had instead been labeled as a corpse and shipped off to die. And according to ABC News, Tymesha was declared dead even while witnesses at the scene told paramedics that Tymesha was still breathing and that she had a pulse. In the end, this was a gross case of negligence on behalf of the paramedics and the police, and Tymesha's family is now in the middle of a legal battle against them. After Tymesha was declared dead and brought to the mortician's office, she lay suffering inside the body bag for over two hours until someone opened it, only to find her eyes wide open and full of life. I bet the guy at the morgue was surprised, to say the least. Number 4. Wake Up Screaming A woman living in Greece was recently declared dead by professional doctors, only to wake up inside of her coffin less than an hour after she was buried alive at her own funeral. In this case, the woman woke up after the ceremony had already ended, and she was already buried. Witnesses at the scene claimed that they could hear banging and screaming from within the grave. In fact, people nearby were so disturbed by the screaming that they heard coming from underground that gravediggers were called back to get the woman out of the dirt. But, unfortunately, by the time the gravediggers got her out and got the lid off the coffin, she was already dead again. Now, here's where things get a little controversial. Witnesses did claim to hear screaming and banging, and they are still convinced to this day that the poor woman had woken up and then expended all her oxygen by screaming. However, a doctor at the scene denied any possibility that the woman had woken up inside of her coffin. He claimed she had already been in the state of rigor mortis and would not have been able to shout or even move. At this point, nobody is really clear what happened. At last we heard, a coroner in Greece was waiting to examine the body to find out the truth. Number 3. The Funeral Baby A baby recently died following the premature delivery of twins after a short five-month pregnancy. The girl was declared stillborn, and the boy was later declared dead. Both of the babies were placed into individual plastic bags and given to the devastated family. But on the family's way to the crematorium, they were shocked to see that one of the babies was still alive inside of the plastic bag. This is what we call a plastic bag miracle, and the baby was swiftly placed on life support back at the hospital and is apparently still alive today. And because of the seriousness of the situation, the super specialty hospital ended up firing two of the doctors involved in the case, as one of the babies had clearly been alive when it was put into a plastic bag and sent to the crematorium. 
Number two, stored in the fridge. Even worse than waking up at your own funeral is waking up inside of a mortuary fridge. These fridges are basically drawers for bodies, and a woman from South Africa was recently sent to the hospital after being found alive inside of one. The woman had been taken to the morgue after being declared dead by paramedics after she'd gotten into a road accident. The ambulance company claimed that she had shown no signs of life whatsoever. But according to the report from the BBC, when a morgue worker returned to check on the woman's body, he found she was actually still breathing and was most definitely alive. An official later confirmed that the woman was taken to a hospital near Johannesburg and given treatment, although the authorities refused to give out her name. As you can imagine, the family was pretty upset about the entire incident, and even though nobody wants to admit negligence, the truth is that the poor woman woke up inside of a morgue's freezer. Had she been in there much longer, she very well could have suffocated and truly died. Number 1. Autopsy Horror A prisoner being held in a jail in the north of Spain recently woke up just in time to avoid a post-mortem examination aka an autopsy. Gonzalo Jimenez regained consciousness right before the autopsy was supposed to be performed and was quickly taken to the intensive care unit at the local hospital. Apparently, he had been declared dead already by at least three doctors. Three doctors got it wrong. That's what the Spanish media reported. But despite being labeled as dead, he woke up covered in autopsy markings. It looked like the mortician had already drawn the lines on his body indicating where Gonzalo was about to be sliced open. It's not clear what became of Gonzalo after he was taken to the hospital, but hopefully he survived and was sent back to serve the rest of his jail sentence. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these people that were declared dead but were actually still alive? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.